My first big skiing trip ever was with my friends Angel, Amy, and Jessica, and we all flew to Colorado. We all rented an Airbnb in the town of Snowmass, right by Aspen Mountain Ski Resort. I had only been snowboarding one other time in my life at this point, and that consisted of riding down the bunny hill over and over. I was pretty bad. First thing we did from the airport was Uber straight to the Airbnb. It was a spacious four-bedroom house. It had a huge deck with a hot tub on it overlooking the Colorado countryside. Since it was nighttime already by the time we got there, we went out to some local bar on the first night, which was a Thursday. The next day, we went straight to the mountain via Uber. We got our rental equipment at the mountain to make things easier. It actually wasn't super crowded on the first day, probably because it was a work day. The next day, it got a lot more crowded. For some reason, I just couldn't really get the hang of it. I couldn't make it down a slope without falling at least a few times. At a certain point, I was so fed up that I just sat on the side of a slope to catch my breath and take a break. Meanwhile, a bunch of people zoomed past me, even little kids that made it look easy. Then came this man who seemed like he didn't really know what he was doing either. He came up to me and asked if I'm okay, and he started trying to make conversation with me. It was the weirdest spot to make conversation, so after a few seconds of answering his questions, I got up and said nice talking to you and resumed trying to snowboard down the mountain. This mountain was a blue run, meaning it was a longer slope to get down and slightly more difficult than a green. I stopped again a little further down the mountain to take another break. I really wasn't having fun. To my dismay, I saw that guy from before approaching me again. He was inching closer to me with the same struggle I had been dealing with. He stopped right next to me and unstrapped from his snowboard, then sat a few feet from me. He started talking to me about how he's not used to so many pretty girls like me being here. This was super weird because I had on a ski mask and helmet. My face was practically covered. He asked who I was here with. I lied and said my boyfriend. He laughed and said he saw me come here with all girls. I looked at him and said ew really loud and then got back on my snowboard and continued down the mountain. It's weird but I snowboarded better than I ever had in that moment, perhaps because I had the proper motivation to just get down the mountain. When I got to the bottom, I immediately went to the lodge and sat at one of the tables calling each of my friends. Amy was the first one to pick up. I explained what just happened and asked her to just come sit with me. A few minutes later, I saw her walking over to me. I had already texted our group chat saying we should leave. It was already around 3 o'clock anyway, we'd been there a few hours. When Angel and Jessica finished whatever run they were on, they met us back at the lodge. We returned our rental gear and then Ubered back to the Airbnb. We all showered and changed and then headed out to the village for dinner. We then went out to a few of the local bars afterward, and we got decently drunk. When we came back to the Airbnb, we all four went into the hot tub on the deck and drank more alcohol. After a while of that, we all eventually went to our rooms to go to sleep. I'm basically an insomniac, and I stayed up on my phone for over an hour scrolling on TikTok, even as I was still buzzed. I wasn't tired, and this was a very, very good thing that may have saved us. I heard footsteps out in the common area, either the living room or the kitchen. The Airbnb had wood floors throughout. Initially, I thought it was one of the girls going to the bathroom or getting water, but then I heard the doorknob to my door twisting. I sat up and was about to say one of their names, but I stopped myself because why would one of them be trying to come into my room? I instantly went to the group chat to text everyone and ask who that is. Nobody answered. They must have been asleep. I tiptoed to the door and put my ear up against it. I heard footsteps moving around. When it went quiet, I ever so quietly unlocked the door and twisted the doorknob. I pushed the door open as gently as I could and I peeked into the living room. I looked from corner to corner until I saw a tall black silhouette walking from one door to the other. It was a man for sure. He was trying to get into one of our rooms. I wanted to scream out to my friends to warn them, but I stayed silent because I was too scared. I closed my door quietly and locked it. I prayed to God everyone had their doors locked. Four girls in one Airbnb though, of course we did. I called 911 quietly and whispered the entire time into the phone. That's when I heard the light knocks on my bedroom door. I turned to the door and watched as the doorknob again started to turn, but he couldn't open it. I kept saying please hurry into the phone. All the woman on the line kept saying back is they're almost here and to remain quiet. 
It was entirely possible that the man on the other side of the door heard me whispering because he started pushing into the door. I heard shoves and bangs on the door and I just couldn't help it anymore. I screamed, get out of here, followed with, I'm on the phone with 911 right now. The bangs stopped and a voice on the other side said, okay, sweetheart. And then I heard his footsteps walking away. The 911 operator instructed me to stay in the room until police should arrive. I peeked outside the window, but it was simply too dark to see anything beyond a few feet in front of the window. My friends were awake now from my screams. I told them all to stay in their rooms. Police finally got there about 5-10 to 10 minutes later, and they came right into the Airbnb since the door was unlocked. Once it was confirmed the intruder was gone, we ensured every entry point was locked and secured, and they left. Sleeping after that was difficult. Of course, the idea came up that it was that creepy man from the mountain who was following me, and I do believe that's a possibility. The voice could have been a match, honestly. After working out a partial refund with the Airbnb host, we spent Sunday traveling the area instead of snowboarding again, and we stayed at a small motel Sunday night. We flew home Sunday morning. Whenever I was scared as a kid, my dad had always told me in life that you should not be scared of ghosts, fear the living because they can actually hurt you. In my late teenage years, I came into some money after my father committed suicide and I received an inheritance from him. At the time of my dad's passing, he and my mom owned a cabin up in Oregon by Mount Bachelor. The cabin had been put up for sale since my mom could no longer afford the payments and renting it out was not covering the payments either. The cabin was set to go on the market for sale in less than a month and was in the process of finalizing all the paperwork with the realtor and lawyer. So for that month's time, the cabin was not going to be rented out any longer and was just going to be vacant. I saw this as a chance to get away for a while and clear my head in light of all the things going on. I quit work, packed up my snowboarding gear, grabbed my dog Midnight and headed up in my dad's car to the cabin. My first two days at the cabin were normal and nothing out of the ordinary happened. I spent my days playing with Midnight in the snow and snowboarding, and the evenings playing PlayStation or listening to music, drinking and smoking out on the balcony. I had already stocked up on food, cigarettes, and liquor, so I was pretty much a shut-in aside from the occasional out to hit the slopes. With my dog as company and DVDs, PlayStations as entertainment, I was quite content and started to feel relaxed after all the drama that had preceded my outing. The cabin itself was two stories. The bottom story had the living room and a side guest bedroom along with a small kitchen. Upstairs had another two rooms along with a walkout balcony attached to the master bedroom. Most of my time was spent either in the living room, kitchen, or master bedroom. I never ventured into the other rooms and always kept the doors leading into them shut. The third day came around and I was going through my usual routine of playing with my dog, playing games, and watching DVDs. That day it was a pretty heavy snowfall, so instead of hitting the slopes, I stayed in. That's when things started getting a bit weird. In our area, there were only two other cabins adjacent to ours, maybe a block away from each other. All other cabins aside from these two were around a mile away from ours. Surrounding us was mostly forest and very tall pine trees. Both these cabins were empty and from the past couple of days, I knew that no one was currently staying there. Around midday, while outside with my dog, I noticed what looked like footprints in the snow around the area surrounding our cabin. It was still snowing, so the footprints looked semi-fresh, like someone had just been there in the last 20 to 30 minutes before me. I thought that maybe someone was staying in the cabin near me that I may not have noticed. Maybe they were shut-ins like me. Alright, whatever. The footprints led away from my cabin and they disappeared in the snow towards the denser part of the trees. I disregarded the footprints and went back inside. Nighttime came around and I decided to head to bed. My dog Midnight was laying on the bed with me when I noticed his ears perk up to a listening position. This was followed by him quickly jumping off the bed and running downstairs to the living room. I lay in the bed and stayed silent. I was honestly freaked out. and I could hear him moving around downstairs back and forth. After around 5 minutes, he ran back upstairs to me and started to do his doggy dance for the sign that he had to pee or that he wanted to go outside. Shit, well fine, I can't say no to him, so we both went downstairs to the outside driveway for him to do his thing. Only, he didn't want to pee. As soon as we were outside, he started to pull his leash trying to drag me to where he wanted to go. He kept looking into the dense part of the trees where the prince had been earlier. 
but he also kept sniffing the side of the house and looking up towards the roof. After he figured out that I was not going to go where he wanted, he sat himself down and just stared into the darkness. A bit unusual for him, but alright, maybe there's some forest animals out there that he wants to chase down. But fuck this, I didn't want to chase anything, so I pulled him back inside and we both headed back upstairs. Around half an hour later, I was lying in my bed when I heard what sounded like hooves walking on my roof. It was only a series of around six steps, and I rationalized that it could be a pine cone falling from a tree onto the roof, or maybe a kind-hearted forest animal running around. But here's the thing. The steps seemed to be spaced apart like a man-length stride, so it was really freaking me out. Midnight also heard the noise and was quick to run to the balcony screen door, expecting for me to let him out. Alright, you know what? I'm a tough guy, and at the time, I considered myself to be fairly well-built and strong enough to handle myself. So I grabbed my coat and shoes along with my cigarettes and flashlight and went out onto the balcony. As soon as I went outside, I lit up my cigarette and started canvassing the roof with my light. Nothing there, and the snow on top was undisturbed. Weird. Was it all in my head? What about midnight hearing the noise? Maybe he was feeding off my paranoia. I started to calm down and relax again. My eyes started to adjust to the darkness, and I kept smoking and just staring at the stars and trees next to our cabin. That's when I saw it. In a tree that was a little taller than our cabin and around 20 feet from the balcony, I saw what looked like a man crouched in a squatting position in between two branches. It looked really tall, like 8 or 9 feet, and it was really fucking skinny. It was squatted on one branch, and its freakishly long, white arms were extended above its head holding onto the branch above it while its mouth was wide open with no expression. What the fuck is that? I wasn't sure if I was really seeing this thing, and stood just staring and sat there motionless. I noticed Midnight stand up and start pacing behind me and lightly barking at the same time. The thing still did not move. I put my cigarette out and was debating on shining the light in the thing's direction, but something in my head kept screaming not to. So I walked backwards to the inside of the room and pulled Midnight with me. Once inside, I locked the door and shined the light in the thing's direction, but there was nothing there. I shut the curtains to the screen door and retreated back to bed, but later on in the night, I heard some light tapping at the screen door, like someone was tapping on the glass with their fingers. It was consistent and did not stop for nearly an hour. Midnight seemed to stare at the door, but he wouldn't go near it anymore. The weirdest part was that I had a feeling like someone was inviting me to open that door. But at the same time, I kept hearing my dad's voice in my head, telling me to stay in bed and don't do it. I listened to my dad's voice and just stayed where I was. I passed out eventually and woke up in the morning. It didn't take me long to pack everything and get the hell out of there. My family owns a property in Vermont that we use in the winter time for skiing and snowboarding. It's at the top of a hill surrounded by woods. The nearest neighbors are up the road, but separated enough where you can't see their houses from our property. There's a big shed outside that we keep a lot of our snowboarding gear, along with general lawn care stuff like shovels, rakes, and everything like that. We keep the shed locked whenever we aren't up there. Once we unlock it though, we keep it unlocked for the entirety of our visits as we don't really worry too much about people coming and stealing anything while we're there. The actual house is pretty nicely sized. It's technically three floors, with the third floor being a loft master bedroom, which is reserved for my parents, and my siblings and I aren't allowed to use it. This one weekend, I was heading up there with this girl Melissa, who I was going to be teaching how to snowboard, as she'd never been before. We had a beginner board up there that she used, along with all the proper equipment. On our property, since it's on a steep hill, we actually made our own little custom slope that we'd sometimes snowboard or sled down for fun. So before taking her to the actual mountain, I suggested I teach her the basics on the hill. We put on all of our gear, and right up at the top of the hill, I slowly started descending, showing her the basic movements. When she made her first attempt, she right away fell as expected, but she was persistent and kept trying and getting back up. Each time we made it to the bottom of the hill, she'd get a little better, and then we'd walk back up and do it again. At some point, we both heard a male voice call out from the woods, presumably at us. It said, hello. 
We start looking around, confused as hell. All we saw were a bunch of trees and a white sheet of snow covering the floor of the woods. You'd think it would be easier to spot someone or something when it's just a sheet of white surrounding you. But nope, we didn't see anyone in the woods. I yelled out, is someone there? Nothing now. Just the dead silence of a secluded place in the winter. Melissa and I were slightly disturbed, so we walked back up to the house and went inside. I didn't think it could be the neighbors because I didn't see the driveway to the one we passed shoveled, and the neighbors further up the hill would have no reason to come down like that. I told her it must have been some random person going for a hike in the woods. That was the least scary possibility. Next thing we did was go out to my favorite nearby diner, then we went shopping for basic groceries to get us through the next few days. Since it was a bit late now, we were going to spend the rest of the night just chilling at the house. We ate dinner and then chilled by the fire pit out back. At some point, we both heard the distinct sound of shoes stepping in snow not far away. I turned off the music for a second, but with the sound of the crackling fire, it still wasn't dead silence. By this point, whatever we heard stopped. I asked for her phone so I could use both my and her phone's flashlights to point into the woods. Again, like earlier, I called out, is someone there? which scared Melissa. She asked to go inside, so we did. We didn't go back outside that night. The next morning, I woke up to Melissa getting out of bed. I was still tired, so I went back to sleep, and when I woke up again, she was still not in the bed anymore. I looked at the time, and it was already like 9am, so I got up and opened the curtain to the window. I looked out at the shed outside. The door was open, and I saw the breath of someone being blown from behind the door to the shed. I wondered what Melissa was doing out there. I opened the window and yelled Melissa's name, but when she called back, her voice came from inside the house, right in the living room. I got goosebumps. I kept watching the escaping breath of whoever was in our shed blow out the door. I yelled outside, yo, who's in my shed? And a few seconds later, I shut the window and ran out to the living room to find Melissa watching TV, or rather now, she was more so just standing in front of the couch concerned. I looked out the back door and saw the back of somebody dressed in black running into the woods. I looked for my boots, but by the time I put them on, it was too late to chase him. I went to check the shed to see if anything was stolen, but it seemed everything was there. I relocked the shed just to be safe. I saw the footprints of that person lead from the woods to the shed, then back to the woods again. I wasn't about to follow the footprints though. After nerves calmed a bit, we ate breakfast, then headed for the mountain and we had a whole day of snowboarding. Melissa picked it up surprisingly well, and we plan to have one more day at it tomorrow. After we got back to the house, we cooked a steak dinner, then watched a movie. We didn't want to sit out in the dark again after last night and earlier that day. In the middle of that night, I woke up to Melissa shaking me. She explained why, then she told me to listen. We sat in silence for about 30 seconds before we heard, Help me! in a very long, drawn-out voice from outside. Melissa was in hysterics. Then we heard the voice again. I went over to the window, and she begged me not to open the curtain. I said I was just going to take a peek. I gently lifted one corner of the curtain to peek outside. I don't know what I was expecting to see, except for total blackness. I cracked the window open, and a gust of cold air hit me in the face. I listened, intending on getting a better idea of where this voice was coming from. And then I suddenly heard footsteps in the snow, getting much louder very quickly. They were coming toward the window. I quickly pulled it down and relocked it. Whoever it was already saw me though. The knock on the window confirmed it. I looked over at Melissa who was hiding under the blanket making faint crying noises. I told her to just stay quiet. Our best response was to not respond or acknowledge them. There was never another tap at the window, nor were there any more calls from outside. It was a long couple hours after that of not sleeping. Eventually though, we got so tired that we did end up just falling asleep. The next morning, I checked around the house and there were footprints literally surrounding the house. Someone or multiple people had been circling the house, apparently going from window to window. We decided we'd leave early, because clearly someone was stalking us from the moment we got there. I locked everything back away in the shed, then we packed the car, and back to Rhode Island we went. For those curious, nothing was broken into or stolen the next time any of us went back up there, so truthfully, I don't even really have a guess as to what that person out there wanted, 
but it was most definitely the same person stuck in the house from the moment we got there. It might have been multiple people, and when you're up in an isolated place like that, realizing you're not alone is the scariest thing imaginable.